Okay, hello and welcome. So, uh, in this video today I'm going to be doing the one thing that I think everybody hates having to deal with uh, whenever they're, uh, whenever you've done some development for a little while, uh, and that is I'm going to go back and try to revamp uh, one of my old projects. So, the project that we're going to be looking at today is called KWS. So this is a project that I made a while ago, and so basically what this is, is this is a script that allows you to run, um, it just allows you to do a whole bunch of different things that are really easy, so it allows you to do things like, uh, you can type, I can't remember what the command is now, um, you can type like coos and then SSL, and then you give it a URL and then uh, a dash E flag if you want to see what the expiry is. Uh, you can also trace redirects, um, and you can do a whole bunch of other things with this. And so basically, so this is just a super simple utility. Um, there's nothing really that fancy about it. Um, it, for some reason, seems to be, it still has arg parts in there, so I'm probably gonna get rid of that as well. <clears throat> but basically, the, this whole, um, this whole, uh, project I've basically left for a while uh, I haven't touched it I think actually as it currently stands I think it's currently broken um, but there's also things like there's no documentation for it uh, there's basically just some code uh, I don't even fully understand what this directory structure is there's some random bits of code there's some kind of documentation but not really um, so yeah so basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through Gonna update it. Uh, gonna add some of the stuff that I've added in um, the Python packaging template. So if you haven't seen that before, uh, inside uh, GitHub.com/Canadian-coding, there's the Python package template, and this has some information about setting up a Python package properly. Um, and so this is basically I'm gonna take this. I'm gonna transition a bunch of the content from here uh, into um, <clears throat> this particular script and go from there to actually writing all of the, uh, re by basically refactoring this. So, um, so yeah, so let's get right into it. So first off, let's go ahead and grab this. And we're gonna do a clone. Oops. Okay. And CD into it. And we're gonna do git checkout v. Yep. So that's the current branch. We're gonna get pull. Should have the most update version, and let's open VS Code. So, uh, first of all, I guess the most important thing is to see if this even works still. So, pip install dot, and let's see what we got. Okay. Okay, it seems to still kind of work. So let's see what we got here. SSL, let's say caramel.ca, and then let's check the expiry. Okay, key error, domain. Okay, so this is, so we're already hitting some random errors in here, so there's no error catching. Um, I guess let's start with the application code and then we'll look at infrastructure afterwards. So, right off the bat here, in line 63, uh, I think it's at the command line utilities, right? Yep, yeah. okay, cool. So, in line 63, so, key error domain. Oh, because domains is the first thing here. So that's a, okay, that's actually surprisingly easy to fix. And let's just try that. Okay, so script encountered an error, SSL v3 handshake error. Oh boy, this is gonna be, this might be a long one to debug. So, um, okay, so at least it's not throwing that random error that time. Do any of these things work? Uh, so let's do redirects. And then let's do uh, HTTPS colon slash slash portfolio dot dot CA, which should automatically redirect back. Uh, redirects. And then, sorry, 
X dash T for the trace. So let's see the trace. Okay. So there's <laughs> there's a lot of things that aren't working anymore. Um, okay. Oh boy. All right. Um, <laughs> how do I want to go about dealing with this? Oh God, why is everything broken? Okay. Uh, what's the last one? Domains. Uh, oh, this is using some. Oh, this is using some sort of API key that I forgot to download. Oh man. Yeah, you can you can tell that uh, this was this was written in a very different time for me because this is absolute hot garbage. Um, okay, so hit an issue with, oh, you know what? Is this because I just need this? Ah, that's why, because it automatically does that, okay. Um, because it only works with HTTP and then, yeah, okay, cool. So the redirect trace for the HTTP version seems to work, um, uh, which would be good to actually know in the documentation. Um, okay. Cool. So <laughs> we're one for three. Um, so that's good. So, okay, so URL. <sighs> that SSL handshake one's going to be a nightmare because I'm sure there's going to be. Oh, I'm sure for the SSL one, there is going to be a whole bunch of issues with that. So let's just say so SSL. Get adder info failed. Okay, so that time it actually failed for a good reason. So that's good. So there wasn't a handshake failure that time. So we're getting there. So now it's just hitting an error without you trying to find the SSL cert. So that's good. So at least we know that it's actually working now before it was just giving us a handshake error. So that's good. Um, cool. Okay. So functionality wise, <laughs> it's not in a good spot right now. Um, we'll deal with that as we go. But the first main thing is let's start getting some of the infrastructure stuff set up properly. Um, because right now we have no real documentation. There's no... Um, there's a lot of things that just aren't that just aren't good. Um, white source. Um, yeah, we'll leave white source in there. I guess there's no no harm no foul. I guess with having white source in there. Um, but let's okay. So first off, let's just quickly check out the setup. I assume is this using that really old thing that I did, or is this doing the right one? Long description. Uh, for content. Oh, okay, so it is okay. So this is working. It's just a weird, uh, gross way of doing it. Um, okay, so let's just go through and maybe fix that real quick. Um, so we'll grab good content. We'll do that, and then inside long description we will. Just grab get content of that. Long description is equal to that. And then we can get rid of that. Just like that. Alright. Cool. So that's the first thing that's fixed, okay? So now we have there. Uh, I'm gonna get rid of PyTube, so I was originally using a YouTube command, but the problem with having the YouTube command there is that PyTube is broken on Windows, so that basically is effectively useless. Um, <clears throat> so we'll get rid of that. What else do we need? What else do we need? What else do we need? Uh, let's update this to my new email. CanadianCoding.ca. And anything else in here? No, I don't think so. I don't think there's anything else that's special in here anyways. Oh, the extras require. That's actually somewhat useful. And then the extra require. Perfect. Okay. Now we have the Nox information. So Nox, PyTest, MKDocs. So 
Actually, I'm going to go ahead and delete the requirements TXT because uh, if we're going to use Nox anyways, there's no um, there's no need to. Um, okay, so Nox file. This is just generic stuff about everything. So we'll go ahead and grab this and we'll do Nox file.py. Check everything in there. I don't think there's anything we actually have to specifically change. No, I don't think so. So we have that in there. We'll go ahead and grab uh, the mkdocs file. So first of all, let's make a docs folder. So I'll call it the docs. And we'll go ahead and add a mkdocs.yaml. And we'll just paste that in there. Things. Here is useful web scripts. Cool. Home repo URL. Let's just grab that. So description. Okay, that's good enough, I guess. Whatever, that's fine. Uh, and then me. Oh, there we go. And nice. Okay, cool. So, docs are there. And what else do we need to do? What else do we need to do? Uh, Da, license is already done. That's already done. So we need to create a test folder, which we will have to deal with at some other point. Let's just go to tests. Sure, primary test.py. Put that in there as a placeholder. Save that. Okay, perfect. So we have things set up pretty much as we need them. The only thing that we have left, as far as I know, oh, one thing that I do need to do, actually, I guess I'll go ahead and do this now, is add Nox files as part of the not included stuff. Nox files, so dot Nox. Just like that. And then from here, let's go ahead and let's grab the information from here. We'll just grab that. And <laughs> yeah, basically the entire readme file sucks. So we're gonna redo the readme file. <laughs> okay, so let's just quickly pop open the readme. And we will start from scratch. Okay, cool. So, let's do it. So, this project is called Coons. Here's useful scripts. Uh, in case you're wondering, by the way, the name for this project literally just came out of the fact that I needed something four letter long just so that uh, it's not annoying to have to keep typing it out every time. Um, okay. There we go. So, a generic Python project. So, some useful and common web actions. Okay, so control F and we're gonna look for package name, which I apparently spelled wrong. Replace with. Oops. There we go. Cool. Done. First one's done. Fill out the sections. Okay, so I've already created the setup and the mkdocs.yaml. 
We already have the codes. We're not going to worry about the tests for this one yet. Although you should do tests. I'm just going to say this right now. It's just uh, this particular script I haven't bothered yet. Uh, and then we're just going to go through and fill out the rest of the information on our own. So, in this case, we can clone the GitHub link. Okay, so people can either install it from source or they can install it from PyPI because PyPI is on there. And actually, I'm going to put from PyPI first because it's already on PyPI. So just run pip install and there we go. That's all. That's all you need to do. Um, okay. Arguments. Uh, let's go ahead and grab the current. Uh, actually, I can just do. Here's help. Do, 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 do. And that seemed to work, so we'll just grab that. And I think it's Control Shift K. Yeah. There we go. Make that bash. Perfect. There we go. So now we have the arguments listed there. And yeah, cool. Uh, da, 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 da. Additional documentation can be found at. HTTPS called slash slash codes dot read the docs dot io, which I haven't yet set up, but I'm gonna set it up right away after this, so we'll put it in there for now. And I think everything else is mostly fine. No additional information. There we go. Perfect. So now I can just axe that out. Uh, and then also another good thing to have is like for each argument here. Uh, how many is this? Is that four? Is it five? And then have SSL as one of them. Four, five. Have redirects as one of them. And one, two, three, four, five. Have domains as one of them. And then go ahead and fill out the information for that. I'm just going to leave that for now. Uh, I will fill that out later. Uh, I'll just probably not make you watch it while I do it. So, <clears throat> there we go. So what do we have? So we have 20 minutes and I've managed to set up a uh, docs folder, a tests folder, and get all of the uh, the readme finished off here. So not, not too bad. Um, so, as far as the docs go, I'm going to go ahead and create an index. Dot md I just say welcome to the who's documentation. Ooh. There we go. Okay, cool. So now then, um so I'll save that one thing in here. There is slash coos. Uh, it's probably worth mentioning in here that there is also slash, what did I call it? Command line utility.py. Okay. This is what, four? Four. The main entry point for the coos commands. Actually, don't even need slash coos because we're just going to specify each of them. Uh, so slash coos slash utilities. Contains all 
the core logic that is used by the main entry point. Okay, and classes is just empty right now. So I actually, you know what? I'm just gonna get rid of classes because I don't think we actually need it for anything. I don't even know why it's there. Um, okay, so. Have that. Good. Good. Okay. So now we have all of our uh, all of our boilerplate stuff all set up. Uh, so that's basically all we need. Um, so the only things left to do now are to actually fix this code, which is um, going to be yikes, and uh, to finish writing the documentation. Um, but one other thing before we do that, because uh, it looks like I haven't done it here, um, that's super helpful is inside GitHub, if you're using GitHub, I think GitLab has an equivalency, I just don't know where it is, uh, and I'm sure Bitbucket does as well. Um, but basically, you can actually have access to what's called a Kanban board, and so Kanban boards are super useful for project planning. Uh, and so currently I'm on what? I'm on version, do do do. what is it? Is this so currently on version 0 0.0.5 and I'm writing 0 0.0.6 right now? So, a good idea is if you go into projects and create one for the whatever the project is, so in this case, it's this. I'm gonna do an automated Kanban, is what I usually do. Um, and what I like to do is I archive all the cards in the initial one and I create a new column with whatever the version that I'm currently working on is 0.0.0. .0. Uh, six in this case, which is going to be an in progress column. Uh, I'm going to override all of the in progress stuff that's currently happening. And now we have that column. Just going to move it across. And we can delete the main in progress column, and then we can have the 0, .0 .7. And that one will also be an in progress, and I'll just create it for the time being. And so there we go. And then add all the things that I need to do in uh, as as basically these tickets inside of here. So uh, the first thing is um, to fix the SSL command. Uh, so fix the SSL command. And we'll put that in this version. Uh, what current issue do I have? Huh. Well, isn't that sweet? Somebody went ahead and sent me a new version of PyTube right when I was planning on not using it anymore. This is actually great. Um, this is perfect because it means that I can actually re-implement the code that I stripped. So that's good. So is this on, is this on pip? Pip install pytube3. Beautiful. Okay. So you know what? We're also going to write that command in there. Um, so we're going to want to go setup.py and then do pytube3. So that's perfect. And let me see if I still have. So it looks like since he's gone through and updated it, I bet you I can actually go through and grab the old YouTube code and just copy paste it. So let's just currently grab this. Uh, so what do we want? So YouTube is what we want. Uh, do I have base code still open? Yeah, okay, cool. So inside utilities, we will add a new... Oh, no, there is a YouTube.py. Perfect. And is this... Perfect. He's aliased it. That's even better. So now I can pip uninstall pytube. And I can pip install pytube3. Beautiful. Okay, cool. So now I think I removed the Pi to uh, the YouTube command. So let's just grab the old code. And what was the original code? 
Oh, is it actually even broken before I did that? Let's change the log pip install. Added an SSL argument. Did I remove? Oh, I did. Okay, apparently I did remove it. Okay, so let's um, let's re-implement the command then. So what currently do I need to do? I need to pass the video URL and the video path, or the path that I want to save to the YouTube file. Okay, that's easy. Um, so we'll just do Coons YouTube and then URL. And path. Perfect. Uh, actually, we can make this optional because by default we can make it equal to dot. Perfect. Um, and then in here, we can just do if args YouTube uh, download. Oh, cool, it's already in there. Download uh, args URL and args path. So I think that should actually work. So let's do pip install dot. And did that uh, sorry, let me just double check. Yeah, that does include Pi Two Three. Perfect. So now I should be able to do Koo's YouTube, and uh, let's just go to YouTube, and let's just grab some we random link. Me. Whoops. Grab this. So I should be able to type that, and then hit enter. Key error path. Is that because I made path optional? So let's do this. Let's do if not orgs path. Then orgs path is equal to dot. Oh, whoops. Install. Query has no attribute download. Interesting. Okay, let's see if he's changed anything. So streams dot first dot download. Let's see what we have. Streams dot From so YouTube dot so you so yt is equal to that. So let's just do this. So yt so the video so you give it the video URL and then you say dot streams dot filter. Dot order by resolution. Do you have to do all of these, really? Okay, let's just see. Dot order by resolution. Dot desk. Dot first. Dot download. Desk dot first dot download. So that's interesting. Huh. 
Would you look at that? So it actually works. Interesting. Um, so. Uh, okay. Cool. So the YouTube command works now. That's good. Uh, so in that case, uh, I'm just going to go ahead. Um, I'm going to guess there's probably no... Oh, oh, oh. This one's really fun. You just put your feet. Okay, so that does work. Okay, that's cool. So we'll delete that. So, if that's the case, then the only other thing that I wanted to test is let's just test the other path. Oops. See, secure desktop. Bam. And now, in theory. So let me just quickly do this. Let me just quickly say, um, hold on. Uh, print. I'm just asking this. Downloading. Yeah. Uh, oh. Downloading video title to path. Okay, right, cool. Okay, so that works. Um, yeah. Okay, perfect. So now we have the YouTube command working, so now we need to fix the uh, SSL commands. And I think that should be good. Uh, basically, we can go ahead and start with the more fun stuff of adding some documentation. Um, so I, it might take me a while to figure out what's going on with the SSL command. So probably what I will actually do is I will still leave the recording going, but I'm probably just going to speed it up from here through and uh, just go through and try to figure out what's going on, debug that, and then come back and we will set up an actual documentation website uh, using read the docs and uh, merge the branches across. So I'll show you what that looks like and also uh, submit an official release to PyPI uh, as well as on here. So uh, I am going to go ahead and just speed it up from here on out. And uh, yes, let's get into it.
gone through and made a whole bunch of changes. Uh, I've gone ahead and fixed everything that's uh, broken. Um, so it turns out that uh, the YouTube command now actually works, the SSL command now works, and the redirects command now works as intended. Um, so I've added a couple of extra fancy features, uh, such as being able to now uh, do, do, do just trying to remember. So, so if I do, for example, redirects, and I do kieran .ca, and then I do dash t goes ahead and it finds the redirect because it goes from HTTP to HTTPS. Uh, if I go ahead and I run, <clears throat> and I run uh, YouTube, we saw, I think I started that earlier, so I'm not gonna bother with that, but let's just say SSL, and then here in the uh, Let's check the expiry and the cert. So basically what this will do is this will give us a domain expiry at the top here, and then this will give us the full certificate information, which also includes the not after, which is the which is the actual certificate expiration. <clears throat> so everything is all working as expected. Uh, I went ahead and removed the domain section because I don't want to, I'll, I'll deal with fixing this who is key stuff later. Um, but for now, all I've done is I've just basically taken that command and I've just dropped it down. I'm actually going to put this above it since this is actually parsing. Just like that, and um, I've basically just taken all of that information, and put it down below, so the old doc ops stuff is here, and then the argument parsing stuff is all here. So when I re-implement that, I will go ahead and uncomment that and fix it. <clears throat> but for now, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and write the documentation. Uh, so the system that I like to use for this is called MKDocs. MKDocs, I find, is the simplest. Oh, one, uh, sorry, one other weird thing that I did have to mention. Um, I forgot about this. Because I'm actually using the SSL module uh, inside the SSL file, I had to go ahead and change it to sslutilities.py. Uh, as opposed to uh, just ssl.py, uh, so ssl underscore utilities, just like that. I had to call it ssl utilities because otherwise uh, it was breaking the namespace. Let me just quickly fix all the inline docs with that information, and yeah, we're good. Um, yeah, and it was, so it was breaking all of it was breaking all the namespacing, which was causing a ton of issues. <clears throat> so. Now, uh, sorry, so mkdocs, yes, this is what I was talking about. So uh, mkdocs is basically what I'm gonna use to write the documentation. So as you can see here, it says, uh, welcome to the Kubus documentation. So if I go ahead and open this up and I do mkdocs serve, this will look a little bit familiar to, oh. mkdocs, oh, sorry, whoops, that's because I'm an idiot. And so, yeah, well, so if I go ahead and do this now, uh, what will happen is, let me just quickly go to localhost 8000. And you'll see here, it uh, looks a little bit familiar for a lot of you. Um, because basically what this does is it just takes the markdown that you have and it just spits out HTML in the form of um, the read the docs theme. So this is uh, where, uh, this is how I generate my PyStall documentation, which has all the quick start and all that sort of stuff. Uh, this is how I generated my AHD documentation, um, which had all of that information, and this is also how I generated, this is basically how I generate all of my documentation, because it's just the easiest way of doing it. Um, <clears throat> so yeah, so basically the way that this works long and short is that each of these docs is just a markdown file, and then inside the MK docs section you just add it as a link inside here. So a um, couple things that we're going to want, we're going to want the quick start, we're going to want information about the actual uh, commands, and uh, so, so yes, let's do the, let's do this, so let's do installation. Actually, we'll just include the installation as part of the home because it's actually not that important because this is just going to be a script. So we'll do install, so the installation will be part of the home. Um, where was that? Let's just quickly do this. And so, yeah, so in here we will have the installation. And then we'll have a quick start. Uh, actually, no, we'll have 
come in. Actually, let's call it quick start. It's always the easiest. Quick start. And then we'll have a contribution guide. Perfect. And then all that you do inside of the MK Docs is you just say quick start. And then you just say quick start.md. And what was the last one? Contributions. Perfect. And then if we go back to the docs, you'll see we now have a quick start contribution guide and the main homepage. Okay, so I'm just going to go through really quickly and I'm just going to hash out all this documentation that's in here. Uh, and then um, <clears throat> I'll come back and I'll show you what the source looks like. And then I will show you how to actually put this on, uh, on read the docs. Okay, so I've gone ahead and I've written all of the documentation now, so everything is all good to go. Uh, and so basically, uh, now all we need to do is first off, we need to commit our changes. So, it add on, added remainder Okay. Uh, actually, one thing I did forget to do was update the change log. So uh, this has a different format, so we'll just follow the same format that I had here. So January, oops, January, what is this? Twenty-eighth, twenty-twenty. Merged v 0.0.6 to master. And what do we do? What do we do? What do we do? User documentation. Fixed uh, commands. All of them. <laughs> uh, what else do we do? What else do we do? Updated inline documentation. Uh, added tests. Structure. Not actual tests. Yet. Um, added Nox to automate the build and distribution processes. Perfect. Okay. So, go ahead and get a commit dash am updated change log. There we go. Okay. So push that to the main branch. Let's go ahead. Okay. Perfect. So 0 .0 0.0.6. Everything is all in there. Oh, one thing I did forget to do was I forgot to add the information about, hold on. Uh, let's, let's just get rid of this section of the readme. And do, 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 do. Yeah, let's get rid of this. And then we'll just say user documentation can be found there. And we will get rid of the development contribution guide as well as all of the rest of. Well, actually, let's just uh, actually, I think all of this is in the documentation. Anyways, let me just quickly double check. No, 
No, it is not. Okay, whatever. So I guess we'll leave that in there. All right, cool. Mm -mm -mm -mm. So we will just go into there. Okay. Installation is there. And the only other thing that we want to grab is info about testing it once it's been done grab that and put it in the readme so just replace the entire thing there we go perfect okay so now let me just quickly check it uh readme commit Dash M. Okay. Perfect. There we go. All right, now we're done. So now we have everything set up. So when we go through here, all of this stuff's in there. Um, perfect. So now the next thing that we want to do is uh, I'm just going to go into here. I'm going to open up the change log at the same time because this is what I normally do. I am going to go into, uh, how do I don't want to do this? Let's actually just, so let's do, so we're going to open releases at the same time. We're going to do the pull request first. And with that pull request, we are going to add this. Merge, we'll assign that to myself. We will create the pull request. White source is gonna do a security check. We're going to swap it to master. I updated that, right? Yep, okay, cool. So we're gonna merge the pull request there. And we're gonna draft a new release. And this is gonna be what is this? V. Oh, am I actually doing a new version? Okay. What am I? What? Z B zero dot. Yeah. Okay. I thought that's really weirdly. Okay. B zero dot zero dot six. Version zero dot zero dot six, and we're gonna grab that information. Drop it into there. And publish the release. There we go. Okay, perfect. So now we can go back to master, and master should have all of the new stuff in there. Perfect. Okay, so final steps here. What do we do? So now that I've updated all of this stuff, uh, everything's been revamped and recreated. What do I actually need to do? So I need to go into development. Uh, just close that so I want to go into here and so one of the things I set up earlier was a thing called Nox this is a lovely little tool and so what I have in there is a uh... oh is this gonna work I don't think the documentation build is going to work just for some specific reasons, but uh, so I'm going to get rid of that. But basically what Nox allows you to do is you can define these sessions and then it can basically just run commands. So if here where it says python setup.py sdist, this would literally be the same as if I went into here into this main directory and ran python setup.py sdist as well as wheel and all that stuff. So this just basically allows me to automate my entire release process. So all I have to do for this now is I just need to do Nox-s release release just like that and it will then go through and it will in you know, a second here it'll prompt me to do a whole bunch of stuff so hold on it does it inside of a virtual environment so that's why it's taking ages so I have built everything. Uh, I'm going to say I have run the test because there isn't any. I have updated the inline documentation. I updated the docs folder documentation. I updated the release page. I updated the readme docs. 
and then now it will install Twine, and then it will upload the distribution through Twine to um, to PyPI, and then we are good to go. So now all I do is just type this in zero nine eight, type my password, goes ahead and uploads it. And now my project is ready to go on PyPI. So now if I go to PyPI, PyPI project, you will see, here we go. Everything is in there. We have all of our information. We have our change log down below and uh, we're all ready to go. So last thing that I like to do is have a documentation, is hide your documentation. And so the easiest way to do that is read the docs.io if you followed vaguely what I did there where I had my uh, MK docs set up. Basically what I can do here now is I can import a project. So I'm looking for KUWS coos. There we go. And then in admin, all I need to do here is under advanced settings, uh, set master as the default branch and set MK docs markdown as the builder. And then in here, I just go build and wait. It's going to go through. It's going to build the website for me using the documentation that I created. Waiting for it to finish. Basically, once it's done, da, 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 da. so it's still just waiting. Come on, you can do it. This is because it's the very first time that I'm building it, that's why it's taking so long. So there we go, so now it's built. I can now, now you come in here and there we go. So now we have welcome to it, what is Coos? We have the installation information. Um, yeah, as well as the quick start guide, which has all the information about how to use the script, all the different commands that are available and also the contribution guide. So there we go, so there's everything that I needed to do. So I have now gone ahead and I've modernized my entire project basically using that same uh, Python packaging template um, system. So that's kind of uh, that's kind of breathed new life into this. So if I go into here, uh, yeah. So this is this one. If you are making your own project, uh, you can just simply hit use this template, and you don't have to worry about all of that stuff. Um, you can just go ahead and use that template. But for me, I had to do it manually because I already have this stuff here. And so this is the diff. Let's let's see the difference previously. So this was here. Let's browse the files. So this was the original. So we had this as the documentation, no real indication of how to use anything, uh, a note about official documentation eventually coming, and a bunch of other stuff. And then I basically came through now finally, and uh, added that all of this stuff as well as created a documentation website and put out a release on PyPI. And uh, that took me two, three hours maybe uh, to finish that up. So um, yeah, not bad. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was useful for you and hopefully you learned something. Uh, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll hopefully see you in the next video.